Hi there, Fiona from Spider Arts with the next video for Virtual Tam Fest. And we're very excited to show you how to make your own parade banner. Now, unfortunately, this year we won't all be able to walk in the parade together, but you can make your own banner that you can display at home and hang on your wall. So, we're going to add some strings so you can hang them up and display them on your wall, and then maybe next year you'll get to walk with them in the parade. <laughs> First thing we're going to need is a piece of A4 paper and a piece of tissue paper, a little bit smaller than the, the piece of paper. So you can use bigger paper, you can use A3 or whatever size you have. I'm just using A4 today because that's what most people will have in their house. Okay, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to fold up our tissue paper either into quarters or into threes. You can see that's quite equal there. I folded that into three pieces. So one, two, and then I'm going to fold that in half. Again, as even as you can make it. And then this is a wee bit like cutting a snowflake. We're going to cut shapes Either little triangles from the corner. Just straighten this off if you've got a raggedy edge. I'm cutting a rounded shape it there. And I'm going to cut a straight one there. You'll get to see what this looks like in a minute. There we go. So I've cut the corners off each section and I've checked the sides are nice and straight. Now I am going to start cutting shapes just as though I was cutting a snowflake. Now you'll see the this shape I've cut here is like half of a love heart and that means that when it opens up the hole will be a love heart shape. You also might want to cut some of these little pieces you've taken out to decorate either what you're making just now or you could make them into something else. And we're just going to continue cutting shapes out of the side of this just now so Whatever shape it is you want to create, you only need to cut half of it. So this little triangle here, these two cuts, when it's all unfolded, that will make a little diamond shape. So you can cut triangles, you can cut circles, you can cut V shapes. I'm also going to cut some wiggly shapes into this. They look like little flames. And I've got some big spaces here, so to cut shapes out of that, I'm just going to double it over and cut. So I've cut a sort of half oval shape there, and as you can see, that creates little teardrop shapes. So I'm going to do that in a couple of places. I quite like how that looked. And you can see the different shapes that are created just by doing half of a shape. Little leaf shapes there. So I think that's enough for me. And now we're ready to unfold it. And this creates the kind of bunting effect like you see in the movie Coco, the kind of special bunting that's used on Day of the Dead. And you can see how pretty that looks on our background. So you can check out if you've got some different colours, you can maybe see what it looks nicest on. I'm trying it on green there to have the whole Halloween-y green and orange. You could try it on black. Anyway, I think I'm going to show you just on the green so that it shows up better in the video, but you use whatever you think looks best. Now a little tip for sticking this on. You don't want to apply your glue stick onto the tissue paper because it's so fragile and the drag of pulling the glue stick can quite often tear the fragile tissue paper. So we're going to put that to one side just now and we're just going to add a few lines of glue to hold it in place. So I'm just doing some stripes up the page just now. And that means we can gently lay our design on top, try and position it as evenly as possible. There we go. So that is the background for our Day of the Dead banner, our Tam Fest Festival banner. Another way you can do the tissue that's a bit easier to fold is if you fold it into quarters. And by that you just fold it in half. 
and fold it in half again. And that's you got it in quarters now, that'll be four sections. So then we've got it all cut roughly nice and even at the edges. Again, you can go ahead cutting off your corners, cutting all your lovely half shapes like you would for a snowflake. So let's see how that looks now. Wow, there we go. So I'll show you that on a background just so you get the idea. And there it is with four sections. And now we're ready to move on to do the sugar skull. For your sugar skull, all you will need is a plain A4 piece of paper. And we're going to fold it in half, lengthways. So I do this just by looping it over and then trying to match up the corners and this edge before I press it down flat. And I can see that's nice and lined up. So next, we can take our drawing pencil and we're only going to draw half of the shapes that we need for our skull. So about half of the page, you're going to draw half a circle. Now make sure wherever you're starting from, you're coming straight out and round. You're not coming up and round, because if you do that, you'll have a heart shape rather than a, a circle. So you're coming straight out and round. Okay, and then the trick for making a skull shape is to make it a little bit like a light bulb. And you know, light bulbs are round at the top and they have a kind of rectangular bit at the bottom. So remember, we're only doing half of it. We've got half a circle and half of the rectangle. And then for the little cheekbones, jawbones bit, I add in another kind of square section there. We're going to ignore these lines here. If it helps you, you can rub these out. We don't need those. These are just our guidelines and we are going to be cutting round the outer section here. Okay, so again, making sure We've done our drawing with the fold line in the centre and our drawing on that half. So holding your paper still folded in half, you're going to start cutting it out now. There we go. We don't need this part anymore. Unless you can think of something cool to do with your shape that's left. And put that to one side. And then we're going to open out our paper and we've got our sort of skull shape. If it helps, you can practice the details in pencil first. And I would always just do one side. Traditionally, sugar skulls would be quite symmetrical. So I'm just gonna begin with one side and I'm gonna show you an easy cheat for how to make your sugar skull look symmetrical. You can look them up online, get some design ideas from Google Images maybe. Have a look there to see what different shapes and patterns you might like to use. I'm leaning quite heavily here so you can see my drawing, but I always recommend going quite lightly with your pencil so you can rub out any bits you don't like before you decide for sure what you're going to do. Yeah, I think that's good enough for me just now. I might add some more details in once I go along. But to make it symmetrical on the other side, I'm going to fold it in half again. If you hold it up to the window and then the light will shine through and you'll be able to see your lines from the other side and we can we can copy those and trace them. Again, maybe you're confident just copying the other side and trying to get it as close as you can. That, of course, is fine too. So now I've traced it. I have the whole design on both sides. So I'm going to add in a bit more detail. Spider webs are quite a common pattern as well. So you might want to include something like that in your design. Sometimes they have moustaches, whatever it is you think was going to make yours look really good. You can go ahead and add some colour to yours now using Sharpies or felt pens, coloured pencils, whatever you have to hand. So I've just added in finishing touches, adding some black outlines just to make it all pop. And there you have it. What we're going to do now, we're going to bring our background and we're going to stick it on top. Very last thing I want to do to make it fancy, I've got a little piece of tissue paper here and I'm going to just measure it to be same size as the paper. You can see that's roughly the same length as the edge of the paper. And to make our little tassely fringy edging, I'm just folding this up a few times like that in a bunch. And then I'm just making little cuts in this all the way along, just a few millimetres apart. And I'm leaving about maybe a couple of centimetres at the top. 
that's to give a space to glue onto the bottom of our page. You could use wool for this or you could use crepe paper, anything like that, whatever you have. And then when you open it out, there you go, you've got your little fancy tassely edge. So we turn our whole page over and just apply glue to the bottom here. We can stick this on now, and this is the part where I get any little bits sticking out, you can just trim them off. Up at the top here, I'm going to add a little stick now. This is where our skewer comes in handy. You can see I've added a band of glue there, so I'm just putting our stick on there, just leaving a little bit sticking out. And then we take our string and just placing that along the edge of our stick. And then another little row of glue underneath. And we're just going to roll the top of the paper, stick down. There we go. And then we're going to cut the sharp part of the skewer off as well, so very carefully, or get an adult to help. So if you hold two parts in your hand, make a loop round your fingers and pull both tails through the loop and trim off the extra. And there you go. We can't wait to see how yours turn out.